Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Ohio County Public Library. We are here in the children's department today. As you can see, traffic going by in the windows behind us. And we are finishing up our pumpkin week. So remember this little guy from yesterday. Now, I misspoke yesterday. And I think it's important for all of us to remember that we all make mistakes. Sometimes we say things and we think we're right. And yesterday when I was talking to you about pumpkins, as soon as I said something, I got to thinking, mm, I think I got that backwards. I made a mistake. When we were talking about this little guy that I told you is a pie pumpkin and the difference between this guy, a pie pumpkin, and those big pumpkins that you get to carve, we were talking about how thick their skin is. And I am pretty positive. I didn't rewatch the video, but I'm almost certain that I told you the information backwards. Pie pumpkins would be really hard to carve because they have so much flesh inside of them. Makes sense because we're going to eat that. Um, carving pumpkins have a thinner wall because you're going to carve into them. You're not going to eat those. So they don't have as much flesh. Pretty sure I gave you that wrong. And I want you to remember, it's okay to make mistakes. We all do it. Miss Leanne does it. Your parents do it. Grandparents do it. Kids do it. We all do it. It's okay. But it's good when we confess that we were wrong and I was completely wrong. And for that, I apologize. But so we have our pumpkin here this morning. Um, I checked out my pumpkins at home. Still yellow. I don't know. They might be yellow pumpkins for Halloween. And I don't care. They're really cute. And that's fine with me. So we're going to put this little guy away. I'm going to put him over here on the side. And I told you yesterday that our activity is an activity that goes with our book, Pumpkin soup. Have you ever had pumpkin soup? Do you guys like things that taste like pumpkin? Now, I have some friends who do not like pumpkin. I don't really understand that because I like pumpkin a lot. I think it's yummy. But some people don't. Um, Pumpkin soup? I don't think I've ever had pumpkin soup before. I've had butternut squash soup, but kind of not the same thing. So our story is pumpkin soup. Now, in the story, they don't really mix colors together like we're going to do in our activity, but they do work together. And I thought that was an important thing to share with you. Again, not a Halloween story, just a pumpkin story. So pumpkin soup. This is by Helen Cooper. I may have to wiggle around. I think we're going to be okay with seeing pictures, um, but we'll twist around just a little bit. Deep in the woods, there's an old white cabin with pumpkins in the garden. There's a good smell of soup, and at night, with luck, you might see a bagpiping cat through the window, and a squirrel with a banjo, and a small singing duck. Pumpkin soup, the best you ever tasted, made by the cat who slices up the pumpkin made by the squirrel who stirs the water, made by the duck who scoops up a pimp of salt and tips in just enough. They slurp their soup and play their song, then pop off to bed in a quilt stitched together by the cat, embroidered by the squirrel, and filled with fine feathers from the duck. And it's peaceful in the old white cabin. Everyone has his own job to do. Everyone is happy, or so it seems. But one morning, the duck woke up early. He tiptoed into the kitchen and smiled at the squirrel's special spoon. Wouldn't it be fine, he murmured, if I could be the head cook? He drew up a stool, hopped on top, and reached until his beak just touched the tip of the spoon. Kerplunk! Down, it clattered. Then the duck trotted back to the bedroom, held up the spoon, and said, Today it's my turn to stir the soup. That's mine, squeaked the squirrel. Stirring is my job. Give that back. You are much too small, snapped the cat. We'll cook the way we always have. But the duck held on tight until the squirrel tugged with all his might and Whoops! The spoon spun through the air and bopped the cat on the head. Then there was trouble, horrible squabble, a row, a racket, a rumpus in the old white cabin. 
I'm not staying here, wailed the duck. You never let me help with anything. And he plucked up the wheelbarrow, put on his hat, and waddled away. You'll be back, stormed the cat, after we've cleaned up. And the squirrel shook a spoon in the air, but the duck didn't come back. Not for breakfast, not even for lunch. I'll find him, scoffed the cat. He'll be hiding outside. I bet. He's in the pumpkin patch. But the duck was not in the pumpkin patch. They could not find him anywhere. So they waited all that long afternoon. The cat watched the door. The squirrel paced the floor. That duck will be sorry when he comes home, they muttered. But the duck didn't come home. Not even at soup time. The soup wasn't tasty. They'd made it too salty. They didn't feel hungry anyway. They both sobbed over supper and their tears dripped into the soup and made it even saltier. We should have let him stir the soup, sniffled the squirrel. He was only trying to help, wept the cat. Let's go out and look for him. The cat and the squirrel were scared as they wandered down the path in the dark, dark woods. They feared for the duck all alone with the trees and the foxes and the wolves and the witches and the bears, but they couldn't find him. On and on they trudged until they reached the edge of a steep, steep cliff. Maybe he fell down that, wailed Cat. I'll save him, squeaked the squirrel, and he scrambled down on a long, shaky rope. He searched all around on the ground, but he couldn't find the duck. Then the cat whispered in a sad little voice, Duck might have found some better friends. He might, sighed the squirrel, friends who let him help. And the more they thought about it as they plodded back, the more they were sure they were right. But when they were almost home, they saw a light shining from the old white cabin. It's Duck! They shrieked as they burst through the door, and the duck was so happy to see them. He was also very hungry, and though it was late, they thought they would make some pumpkin soup. When the duck stirred, the cat and squirrel didn't say a word. Not even when the duck stirred the soup so fast that it slopped right out of the pot. Not even when the pot got burnt. Then the duck showed the squirrel how to measure out the salt, and the soup was still the best you ever tasted. So once again, it was peaceful in the old white cabin. Until the duck said, I think I'll play the bagpipes now. The end. I like that story. I hope you liked that story too. So color mixing. Now, this is something that I think is really fun. And we're going to do it two different ways today. First, we're going to do some water with some food coloring. Now, I'm not positive how well we're going to be able to see this, but we're going to try our best. So I have some clear cups nothing special, just some cups that, so that you can see. Um, I tried to find some that didn't have writing on them. I have water, just plain old water, nothing special. And I have some food coloring. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to put out three cups and we're going to put some water in each one. Now, why three? Because we have three colors that we are going to use to make all of our other colors. And they are called primary colors. You guys know what the primary colors are? There are three colors that we need to make every other color. And those colors are red, yellow, and blue. If you have those three, you can mix them to make any other color. So I am going to take our food coloring and we're going to be careful with this because it does stain. So we don't want to get it on anything. I'm going to take my cup and I'm going to do, what do you think, three drops? Let's try three. One, give it a little squeeze. Don't squeeze hard. If you squeeze hard, you're going to get a lot. Mm. Now that's one. And I just have a plain old spoon to stir with. Hmm. That doesn't look too bad, does it? So let's try two drops instead of the three that we talked about before. Okay. So I think that's a pretty good red. So we're going to put that cup down. We're going to go to our next 
cup. So in our next cup, we are going to put yellow. Let's try two because that's what we did with red. So one drop, two drops, and we're going to give it a stir. Mm, not bad. Okay. And our last one, clear water. Oh, I didn't put our lids back on. Let's do that. Before we make a mess, we have to be careful. We don't want to make a mess everywhere. We're going to do our blue. So two drops of blue. Does this remind you of coloring Easter eggs? <laughs> it reminds me of coloring Easter eggs. Um, it doesn't really smell like when you do Easter eggs. Easter eggs usually smell like vinegar because you put that in with the color to make the color last. Oh, that's a pretty one. And we have our blue. So now, what if we mixed colors together? So, I have one cup, just an empty one, nothing special. And we have our red and our yellow. What do you think will happen if we mix red and yellow. Okay, everybody think. What color do you think we're going to get? Mm, I don't know. So we're going to do a little pour, a little bit of red, and a little bit of yellow. Try to do about the same amount. Try. It's a little hard. And what did we get? <gasps> we got a pretty fantastic orange, just like our pumpkin. So, red and yellow make orange. It's pretty cool. So now let's find out, let's see, new cup. We've got other colors that we haven't used yet, right? So what if we took blue and yellow? Okay. Blue and yellow. What do you think? Mm. Get that color in your head. Are you yelling it right now? Can't hear you. A little bit of yellow. Give it a stir. And it's really hard to see this one on the camera. I'm going to add just a little bit more yellow to that one. And I'm going to hold it up and see if this shows up a little bit better. It looks good to me. Um, the camera, I feel like, is making it look more blue. It is definitely green. It's a really pretty color green too. It's it's kind of a dark green. Um, let me see if, did we have a page in our book that was mostly white? Maybe if I put some paper behind. Oh, here, we're going to do that. What if I do this? Hmm, that's a little bit better. Can you see it better now? It's a little bit more green than it was. Okay, so now we know blue and yellow. Let's see if we can hold those both together. Miss Leanne's a little bit clumsy. I hope I don't spill anything. Make green. That looks better. That definitely looks a little bit less blue than it did before. Okay, so now let's see. We have one more cup. What if I take some blue and what other color didn't we use? We haven't used the red again. So let's use red. Ooh, that one I might have poured so much. Can you tell? Red. Let's get our book back so that we have that white page again. Can you see now? It's going to probably look black to you. Um, let me add just a little bit more and see if I can get it. Um, it's going to look black, but it's really purple here. You'll be able to see this better when you do it. Um, sometimes it's hard with the light around. So now we have three new colors that we didn't have in those bottles, right? Remember when we started, we had red and we had blue. We had yellow. Now we have orange and we have green and we have purple. So from those primary colors, we got secondary colors, which means we got the next colors. If we mix two primary colors together, 
we get a secondary color. Now, I could go further with this and we could make the next group of colors. I think that's probably enough for our water today. So, you gonna be a little silly? Do you wanna find out when you, what happens when you mix them all together? Okay, well first, let's do, I don't have very much of this. You know how you make brown? I can remember when I used to teach art classes, always having to tell people when we mix paint, how do you make brown? Brown is a primary color and a secondary color mixed together. So if I mix red and green, those Christmas colors, brown. If I mix purple and yellow, brown. And if I mix orange and blue, I'm not going to mix it all um, because I definitely have way more blue in there than I do, but you get brown. So if you're ever mixing paints and you want to make a really nice brown, um, better than what you would find in a bottle, uh, mix a primary with a secondary. Now, my favorite way to do color mixing, and you guys are going to laugh because Miss Leanne never <laughs> lets you do this. And when you come to the library and we have Play-Doh, what does Miss Leanne say? Well, usually she starts off with the, I love the smell of Play-Doh. But the second thing I say, don't mix the colors. Because if I let all of you mix the colors as soon as you came for story time, we would have brown, Play-Doh everywhere. So this is a good activity. Um, I need to buy more Play-Doh before we get back to story times. So ours is getting a little bit old. That makes it perfect for mixing it together for color mixing. So if you have some red and yellow and blue, what did I call those colors? Do you remember that word I used? Primary. If you have the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, we can make all the other colors. So I'm going to take my blue and I'm going to just kind of break it up into smaller pieces. So let's just divide it in half. How's that? Okay, we'll do that. So we have blue. This is a fun made way to make a color wheel. We have our regular blue and we're gonna leave this one. We're not gonna mix this guy together. And then I'm gonna take this other half. So I have two, I had one. I divided them in half, so now I have two. And of those, I'm gonna divide it in half again. So I have two little, um, about the size of a pea, maybe a little bit bigger than that, balls of blue. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two colors. So I'm gonna divide my red in half. One half I'm gonna put to the side. The other half, I'm gonna divide up into two little pea size red balls. And my yellow, take my half, put it to the side, take my other one, divide it in half, two little pea sizes. Okay, you wanna do them the same order we did the last group? Okay, so now I have two little yellows, two little reds, two little blues. Let's take one red, one yellow, and mix them all together. How many of you are yelling that Miss Leon's letting? colors be mixed together in Play-Doh, I know. Um, and you kind of have to work them pretty hard because we don't want it to look um, kind of marbled. I want it to be pretty solid. So keep mixing, keep mixing. And we get, you already know what we get. We get orange. So we have red and yellow, and now together we have orange. So I'm gonna put that over here with our other colors. Now let's take a blue and a yellow. That's I think that's the order we did the water in. So let's mix those two together. Blue and yellow make, remember? Green, okay. So keep a mixing, keep squeezing them and squishing them together. Enjoy that Play-Doh smell. <laughs> and, oh, almost got it mixed. Still a little streaky, but that's okay. 
and I think I had just a smidge more blue than I did yellow, um, but there's our green. So we had blue and yellow mixed together makes green. And let's see, now blue and red and mix those together. Now, I know when you've come to story time, we've done this with finger paint. Um, we've done this with paint in a Ziploc bag that we squeezed. Now we've done with water. We've done with Play-Doh. There's lots of different ways to experiment and learn about mixing colors together. So this one, my red and blue must be really popular because this one's getting a little bit hard to mix. It's getting our Play-Doh really needs replaced. But for right now, it's just Miss Leanne hanging out here talking to you online. Since there's not kids in the building, we're going to wait a little while. That way, when we do get back for story time, you'll have a nice, fresh, new, newly opened Play-Doh. Okay, so there's our purple. So we had red and blue, and now we have purple. And I can hold them all. Let's see. See if we can shift this so you can see them in my hand. So we have our red, yellow, and blue. Let's move these guys out. Okay. So right there, let's see. Okay. Trying to see them on the camera without them rolling all around on my hand. Between the yellow and the blue, we're going to put that green one. Between the red and the yellow, let's put that orange one. And between the red and the blue, we're going to put the purple one. And you just made a color wheel out of some everyday Play-Doh that we have hanging around the children's department. So I hope you enjoyed our color mixing activities for today. It's a fun thing to do, but you do need some big people to help you. Remember I said the food coloring, it's really easy to stain fingers and clothes and counters and floors and all of that kind of stuff. Cats. <laughs> You just never know what you're going to get food coloring on that you shouldn't. So always do this with a big person. The Play-Doh, I would feel better if you would ask a big person if it's okay if you mix colors together. Because sometimes big people like Miss Leanne don't like you mixing the colors together unless it's for a special reason. Like learning how to mix colors and learning about the color wheel. But a little less messy. So those are our activities for today. Don't forget, we have an announcement coming tomorrow about our virtual Halloween party. Information for that should be appearing on our website soon. Um, it is not quite ready to go on the website yet, so it may not be on the website when I post the video tomorrow. No, it's coming soon, okay? Don't, don't worry about it if you watch the video and then you get on the website and you find out it's not there. It's okay. It's coming. It just might take a little bit of time. So announcement about that coming. I also have some new children's books out. We're going to try to do a video. I'm not positive I'm going to get to it this afternoon. I've got some special things to pull for some of my special friends um, who need some books. So because of that, I may not get to film a new book video until Friday, but that gives you something to look forward to. So maybe on Friday afternoon, we will do a nice little video about all of the new stuff in the children's department. Don't forget that now we are open to appointment. So if you want to come in and look around, if you want to come check out those new things, um, if you want to come check out the Vox books or the other new items that we have here in the department, you can make an appointment. Let me click over here and get our information up on the screen so you can see it. To visit the library, you can call us at 304-232-0244 to set up an appointment. You can also do that by emailing us. If you go to ohiocountylibrary.org, click on the the Ask a Librarian button, you can set up an appointment that way. We still have curbside. So if you don't have time to come in or if you don't feel comfortable coming in to look around yet, we understand. You can let us know what kind of books you want. I will pull them for you or someone else here at the library will pull them for you and we will deliver them right to your car in the parking lot. So a couple reminders video tomorrow about the Halloween party. I'm excited. So that'll come tomorrow. Video on the new items here in the department Friday afternoon. Information about the virtual Halloween party maybe by the beginning of next week. Let's not rush it. 
but those things are coming up. I will see you very, very soon. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.